Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the video for my book study notes on Land Tenure Chapter 6. This is the book, Land Tenure, Boundary Surveys and Cadastral Systems by George M. Cole and Donald A. Wilson, published by CRC Press. Excellent book. I highly encourage it for the boundary surveyor. Um, it takes a unique look at uh, boundary surveying, kind of puts it in context in the context of, of land title and land tenure and kind of the larger cadastral system um, with a with a focus on the United States. It talks about other places, but it's primarily for the United States. Anyways, excellent book, cool book. I actually bought two copies. Uh, this this copy I've used so much it's starting to fall apart. <laughs> so this uh, this video will cover chapter six, um, and I, we're going to have the the written study notes too for you as well. So just uh, something I'm, I'm going to start doing differently, I think, in these videos, uh, for both for this book and for the for the book and Browns, is I want to review the way the author organized the chapter. Um, but in both books, occasionally, um, that the the way that the author organizes the information is not super logical to me, and I struggle with it a little bit. So in some of these videos, I actually kind of reorganize the information in in a way that makes a little more sense to me. But uh, I still want to give you kind of the, the breakdown, the overview of the chapter structure as the author wrote it. So in chapter six of Land Tenure, the authors talk about a, a history of boundary surveying. Um, they actually go through several pages. It's an excellent, excellent kind of summary of the history of, of boundary surveying all the way back to ancient times. Then they talk about land boundary delimitation. This just basically means uh, boundary surveying. So they, they talk about a little bit about what is boundary surveying. What are the types of, of boundary surveys? Then they've got a whole section on water boundary delineation. Um, I'm not sure why. They spend a lot of time on it. It's a, it's, it's a big chunk of the chapter. I'm not quite sure why that is, um, but it's in here. <laughs> it's in the chapter. Um, it may be, they, they kind of allude to this in the beginning of the section. It may be because water boundaries are so common um, throughout the world um, that, that they, they felt like they needed to spend quite a bit of time on them uh, in this chapter on on boundary surveying. So there's a there's a bunch of information on water boundaries. And then they have the last section is on the interpretation of land descriptions. Okay, that's a lot, some surveyors call them legal descriptions. I actually like that term land descriptions a little better. So those are the four main sections of the chapter. So I wanna just go through my notes now and I'm gonna follow the same basic order but highlight some different stuff. I'm gonna I'm mostly skim over that section on water boundaries. So. Um, what I really like about the chapter in the, in the first few pages is the, the authors basically explain to you kind of how surveying plugs into a larger larger cadastral system or system of land tenure. Um, it's the only book I've seen that does that well. I think it's, a, it's, really, it's really great. I think the authors should be applauded for that. Um, I wish they would have spent a little more time on that, maybe a couple more pages on that and not as much on, on some of the other stuff they put in the chapter, but I got to give them credit. Um, you know, in the first couple pages, you kind of see, all right, what is boundary surveying and how does it fit into a larger cadastral system? Because it plays a really important part. I think if more people understood that, more people that were in the real estate industry understood that, we'd probably do more surveying. So you talk about the role of, of, the, of the boundary surveying, the, the role of boundary surveying in the larger cadastral system. And it's basically to do three things, right? It's to, to mark the limits of land ownership, okay? And... Um, it protects the investment in the land, and it becomes more important as land use intensifies, right? And they talk about that in some other places in the book, and I've talked about it before. But basically, as soon as you have a cadastral system that allows people to make claims to a particular tract of land, then it becomes necessary to, to mark the boundaries of that tract of land, right? So that that is the element of a cadastral system that makes boundary surveying a, a necessary element, right? As soon as you tell somebody, you can have some kind of exclusive rights to a, to a certain piece of real estate, a certain piece of property, then you need a way to describe and survey and mark that on the ground, right? And that's what boundary surveying is. And then obviously, uh, the more valuable that use of the land, uh, the more important it is to have those boundaries accurately described and marked. And they, he talks about that. The authors talk about, I'll just talk about that in the first couple of pages. So they have a nice definition kind of short definition of land boundary surveying, what I would call boundary surveying, they call land boundary surveying throughout the chapter. And it is the establishment or relocation of real property boundaries. And they go in and, 
and distinguish between those two, establishment and relocation. So that, that's an important part of the definition. So let me just, one more time. Bound, land boundary surveying is defined as the establishment or relocation of real property boundaries. Okay, and uh, they go in and talk a little bit about what do they mean by establish. Establish means creation through a subdivision. Okay, and then relocation means retracement. Okay, and I, I've, I've started to work personally in my own practice of not using the word establish when I'm retracing. Um, and I, cause I think it's a, it's an important distinction and it's a good nuance. It's a, it's an appropriate nuance, right? You, you establish boundaries in a subdivision, you retrace boundaries in a, in a retracement survey. Okay. Now something they don't talk about in the book, but it's interesting is they, they make that distinction between boundary surveying and land boundary surveying. And it made me realize, you know, there's other types of boundaries that could get surveyed. For example, administrative boundaries. Uh, they don't go into into that a lot, but it's it's an interesting idea, something I might I might have to explore in another short video. So then they talk about the four types of boundary surveys. Okay, the, so one is to determine the area. It's a survey to determine the area and the boundaries of a tract of land that's defined by visible marks. Two, it's a survey to obtain information regarding the boundaries of a tract of land for the purposes of preparing a land description. Three. It's a survey to reestablish or re retrace the boundaries of attractive land for the purpose. Oh, for the purpose of no, nope, I'm sorry. That that was a that was a typo in my notes. So it's to to retrace the boundaries of attractive land based on previous surveys. And then finally, the fourth is to subdivide attractive land into two or more smaller tracts. So I don't want to I don't want to go into detail on those four in this video. They just they kind of give you a short bullet list in the book. What I'd like to do. I'll do a separate video where we walk through those four different kinds of surveys and I explain what they are. Even though the, the authors have a short bullet list, I, I commend them for having that breakdown. I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I haven't seen it done outside of that book, but I like the way the category, the different types of boundary surveys. And so we'll, we'll do another video and explore that topic in a little more detail. Okay, so one of the key concepts in the book that I really like, um, because I think it's true, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a fundamental truth, of boundary surveying is they say that boundary surveying requires a marriage of technical skills and legal principles, and that's very true. Uh, there's another book I eventually will hope to do some videos on. It's about expert witness work for land surveyors and the way that the way the courts work, and it it's, it has a similar similar concept that uh, the land surveyor is different from a lot of other professions. They they have to be technical, so you got to know math and measurement technology and error adjustment theory and those kinds of things, but you also have to know the law. So it's a, it's a mix. It's a marriage of law and, and technical ability. And this book brings that out. So then in this section on um, land boundary delimination, they have some key ideas. So they talk about what's the difference between a, an original survey and a retracement survey. I've talked about that in some other videos, so I, I don't want to belabor it here. But they talk about it in this chapter. You know, an original survey is a subdivision survey. A retracement survey locates existing boundaries based on available evidence. So it's not creating boundaries, it's it's retracing them based on the evidence that's available. So those are a couple key concepts in that part of the chapter. They also um, have a have an interesting key concept that I, I hadn't really thought about until till I read it in the book, but it's true. And that is that in, in most places now in the United States, what we would call original surveys or subdivision surveys are regulated in some way by the government. So either at the federal level, public land surveys, or at the local level, subdivision surveys, um, you don't get to just go out as a surveyor now and, and, and do whatever you want. If you're creating parcels, there's a lot of rules you have to follow. California is certainly a good example of that. We have a whole section of state law called the Subdivision Map Act that governs how subdivisions are done. And then we have also have local rules at the city or county level for the way we do subdivisions. So it's, it's an interesting, I think there's good reasons for it. The authors don't go into detail about it, but it, they do point out that, that most subdivision surveys in the modern era are heavily regulated by the government. Uh, they also make a distinction between a resurvey and a retracement survey. So they say, you know, a lot of people use the terms interchangeably, but they shouldn't. Um, and I think the authors are correct. I think that's a nuance there. Again, it's appropriate nuance. So a resurvey corrects or fixes the original survey. Okay? And most often we see that in a, a public lands survey system context where the government, federal government goes in and they'll correct a survey. <clears throat> a, a retracement survey is just establishing the location of the, of the original boundaries. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not fixing anything or correcting any mistakes as a general rule. 
And then the authors point out, if you're going to do a resurvey, you can't just go in. Surveyors don't have the authority in the United States to just go in and, and correct problems and boundaries. You have to have the consent of the people that, that have title to land based on the original survey. Okay, that would be something like a boundary ag agreement, for example. Okay, then they've got a, he's got a really, the authors have a really beautiful breakdown of the eight steps in a retracement boundary survey. I don't know that, I, again, that I've ever seen this in print anywhere. By the book, if you're a boundary surveyor, it's got really good stuff in it. So um, I don't I don't a hundred percent agree with the order they have, and I use some different terminology, but I think it's a great it's great to even have this on paper. So uh, their first step, I'm not going to go into detail. They've got a lot of information. I'm just going to give you kind of the quick overview, data collection, what I would call boundary research, data analysis, what I would call field survey prep, uh, survey of visible evidence. It's what I would call field survey calculation and analysis of survey results. That's what I would call the boundary resolution. Uh, search for missing corners and monumentation. Uh, that, I would do that as part of a, of a subsequent field survey, but they break it out on its own step. Demarcation of boundaries. That's what I would call monument placement. Identification of other, other evidence affecting land use and rights. Um, that's what I would call evaluation of encroachments, conflicts, and, un, and unwritten rights. Um, so again, I would do that as part of the boundary resolution, but they break it out as a separate step. And then finally, the, their final step, number eight, would be preparation of, of a plat and survey results. I would call that mapping and technical reports. Uh, so they've got, a, they've got a pretty good workflow. Like I said, there's a couple things that, that they have breaking out as an extra step that I would, I would roll into a previous step, but it's a good workflow. Buy the book, check it out. Uh, if you have the book, make sure you read that section carefully. And then the last thing they do in this section on land boundary delimination is they talk about evaluation of evidence, how that's important. Um, they, they talk about evidence can be physical, like a monument, or it can be written like a deed or a map. Uh, they, they tell you, you, know, you have to you have to evaluate the evidence, weigh it out. Um, they talk about how you can, if you don't find enough physical evidence, you can use alter alternative methods like apportionment, but that that's a last resort, which I agree with. And then they talk a little bit about the order of conflicting calls. So if you have conflicting evidence, either physical or written, which evidence holds over the other. Um, they talk about that in Browns too, but they, they mention it here. I'm not even going to go into the, the section on water boundaries. It's extensive. Um, you can read the book. I think it would serve as a great introduction to the topic of water boundaries. Then you'd probably want to follow up with a book. There's been some books written specifically about water boundaries. But it's good information. I'm just not going to cover it in this video. And then the last section in the chapter that that uh, and I'm going to talk about it. It's uh, interpretation of land descriptions, and so they've got a they've got a, a really important key concept right in the beginning of this section, which is that the interpretation of a land description. In other words, you're going to read a land description and attempt to put it on the ground to survey it. There's two steps. First, you have to determine what needs to be surveyed, and then you determine where that thing is on the ground. That's a really key concept. It deserves its own 10 minute video. I will do that. I'll do a separate video on that. But really important key concept they start out with. Awesome. These guys did a great job. Uh, then they talk about how you have to get in and actually analyze the land description for the controlling calls or elements. They talk about the order of controlling elements. Again, it's also spoke about in Browns, but they have it there. Um, then they talk about, okay, if you've got a, a land description that isn't clear, it's ambiguous, and that happens more than people think. Um, what are the, the rules for construction They primarily are talking about in the United States? In our legal system, what are the rules of construction? In other words, how do you figure out an ambiguity or a conflict in a deed, in a land description for a deed? And so they talk about the rules of construction. You have to, it has to be ambiguous. If it's not ambiguous, you can't use the rules of construction. You gotta, um, the rules are general, so they're subject to the intent of the parties. You know, they're just general guidelines. They're not hard and fast rules. And they also talk about how ultimately the rules of construction, if you if you got to use rules of construction to interpret a land description, that really should be done by a judge. Okay? It's a question of law that's going to be decided by a judge, not by a jury or by a land surveyor. And so again, that's a really important concept. I need to do another video that talks about rules of construction. So I will. I'll, I'll make a note. We'll do that. Okay, so excellent information in chapter six of the book on land tenure. Obviously, I would like this chapter because I'm a land surveyor and that's what they're talking about. But again, I think part of the reason why this is so important is because this, this is just one chapter 
about boundary, boundary surveying that fits into this whole book. And so it kind of, like the whole book helps you understand how boundary surveying fits into the larger system of land tenure or what we would call cadastral system. I think it's one of the most valuable things about this book. It's a good chapter on boundary surveying. It's a good introduction to boundary surveying if you're not a boundary surveyor, but you're a land title officer or you're a land use planner. Still a great book. This chapter will give you a good introduction to boundary surveying. So there you go. There are my notes on chapter six. We'll get these typed up and get them available for download. Then I've got two or three kind of extra bit little fill-in videos that we'll do on some information in this topic because it was too much to cram into one video. Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. We'll get to chapter seven next.